Hello you multi mythological malt moochings. I'm Ralphie and welcome to Ralphie Review 1010 Extras here in the Bothy, somewhere in the middle of a little sea in the north part of the planet called the Irish Sea. Anyway, thank you to Eric J. Lee, one, for that malt mention. I'm Ralphie, welcome to my channel. It's all about whiskey, it's all about quality spirits and reviewing them and appreciating them. And I've just reviewed, in my last review, 1010, this Isle of Arran 10 year old. It's, it's a modern classic. It's the winner in the category of best value Scotch whiskey. 2023 in the Online Scotch Whiskey Awards, that's oswa.co.uk. You'll find a link in the description box below. And it's been a voted category winner, voted by the online whiskey community globally. So it's all around the world and beyond. And uh, it's a very worthy winner. Here it is. Now, as I've mentioned, one of the issues with whiskey, Scotch whiskey, occasionally, is the variance in quality between batches of whiskey. And it didn't used to be particularly important in the old days because not many people had the developed palates. You know, the internet wasn't around then. And reading books, whiskey books, does not develop your palate. It just gives you some referential information. The only way we can develop our palates is by slowly sipping and taking time with different spirits, primarily Scotch whiskey, and actually getting the traditional apprenticeship experience. That's how you learn about whiskey. You can read some interesting information in books, nothing wrong with that, and you can get some entertainment in magazines, but the real source of information which you really need is to be found from other people who already have experience and have a passion for whiskey, and you will find them collectively online. That's where everybody's meeting these days, not down in the pub. And there you have it. So what I have here is a very good example of a particular brand of Scotch single malt whiskey which doesn't have intermittent batch variation issues. This is where you buy a bottle, you thoroughly enjoy it, you go out later, maybe a month later or a year later, and you buy another bottle and then you open it. And even on the first taste, even as you're nosing it, something tells you it's not quite right. And technically there's nothing wrong with it. It's alcohol and water and some extract of oak casks. So there's nothing really wrong with it, except that the only reason you bought it in the first place was for the integrity and complexity of delivery of smell and taste, in particular taste. And when a producer fails to acknowledge that contract, that part of the contract, this is important. A few years ago, it would be put down to bad luck. Not now. Not now that the industry collectively knows that if they put out bad batches, as producers like Bunahaben unfortunately have done, Glengoyne are another example. People are going to pick up on it. They're going to discuss it. And then they're going to downgrade the status of these distilleries. In other words, what needs to happen next is that Bunahaben to recover lost ground and Glengoyne, because they can produce good stuff, need to bottle good stuff and not just cover their eyes, cross their fingers and hope, just hope that people won't notice that what they have bottled is matured inferior to their previous batches. And this is a direct result of the influence of casks that they have in the warehouses. You see, whiskey 
by and large, when it is produced at the distillery as new make spirit, it's consistent. It's as consistent as the grain, the yield and the recipe that the distilleries are using to create their new make spirit. But then it goes into warehouses in casks where, after three years, it will then become recognised and named as whisky. But not until then. So what I'm saying is that distilleries don't produce whisky. Warehouses produce whisky. This is important. People need to understand the significant difference here. And because warehouses produce whisky, the calibre and the quality of the casks in the warehouse will dictate the continuity of the whisky. And the best investment that any distillery can have in towards the continuity of their whisky is the quality of their, or the size of their budget for going out and buying the casks that they need and creating the cask portion recipe that they use for their brands, which is the combination of bourbon and or sherry and or any other influencing casks, wine casks, pork casks, Madeira casks, Marsala casks, rum casks. That's the way it goes. One of the best pointers to the real quality of a distillery is when two bottles are bought a year apart and the whiskey from these bottles may have a slight variation in flavour but there is no variation in quality. This is key, this is critical and this is very important to understand. So let's take this year's Isle of Arden. I've just reviewed this. I bought it just before. I bought this in December. What have we got? Got some lovely scotch mist in the glass. Unchill filtered. Natural colour. Higher strength. What does that mean, malt mates? It means that this bottle is going to hold on to its integrity of flavour for longer. Because that integrity has not been damaged by chill filtration and being bottled by and being weakened by being bottled at 40%. The nose, soft, creamy, very slight ginger jam note in there as well. Lovely, eloquent, fresh, unpeated, barley sugar, rich, biscuity whiskey. Now let's go to the bottle from a year ago. They've both been sitting for roughly 45 minutes. They've both got a teaspoon of water in it just to bring it down. This is slightly darker note in the grain. The biscuity is almost as if it's been in the oven just a little bit longer. That's the first thing I'm noticing. But then we get the butterscotch, the ginger jam. The similarities between these two are nothing short of excellent. Excellent. So what you have is the master blender at the distillery, the person responsible for compiling the batches for bottling, doing a very professional job indeed. These this is a, remains an outstanding example of batch consistency coming from the distillery and the reason they do it is because they've invested in the ability to do it with their cask policy. This is a distillery which is low in advertising and high in product investment. The quality of the casks being used is excellent taste. Rich, biscuity, 
barley sugar, vanilla, slightly more sour than this whiskey, slight darker notes, slightly more sour, but the two are remarkably similar and it takes an experienced palate to separate them. This is very marginally sweeter. But what's most important, what really matters fundamentally is they are both in terms of the delivery of a single malt experience. They are absolutely compatible. When you come across some other brands out there and they have bottled a bad batch, I highly recommend that you share that bottling with your whiskey friends and do a side-by-side -side comparison either remotely, online, or in your whiskey club, or just in your local bar if they'll hire you a room, or just in someone's house if you're close enough together. And actually get the experience of how bad batch variation can be in some brands who are too lazy to recognize the extent to which it is showing up the failings in their business model. And when you find out, talk about it online. Let everybody know. We're all here to share information and sharing information is a two-way process. And some folk may be saying, oh, Ralphie, give the industry a chance. And my answer is the best chance that the industry ever will need, ever, is to do the best with what it's got to be the best that it can be with the best of abilities of loyal, hardworking staff within these businesses that actually get the job done. And if the business wants to cut costs, Cut it in the office and the people that don't actually connect with making whiskey. The internet is the most valuable marketing tool ever created and it continues to amaze me how little, how few distilleries successfully tap into the ability of the internet to communicate and that with their brand and especially to tap into the online community who are considered at times nothing more than eccentric pests and nuisances who ask too many knowledgeable questions at whiskey events, particularly master classes. Am I wrong? Mop mates, am I wrong? No. Well done, Anne. You see, the cream will always rise to the top. All Aaron has to do now is keep doing what they're already doing and they will guarantee their future in a global downturn of demand for Scotch whiskey. I'm Rafi, thank you for watching. Hope you found this engaging, entertainment, fun and yes, importantly, a little bit controversial. See you soon, bye bye.